All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Acumatica Demo Day. So excited that you're here joining us. So excited for our lineup of ISVs. As you can see, we have quite a few of them. It's going to be exciting. And it's so great for you to be able to see them and learn about them before heading to Acumatica Summit. So I just want to run a quick poll to see who is actually going to Summit. If I can find my poll, I might not be doing that. I cannot find my poll. I might do that after um, as I talk. Okay, so this is being recorded and we will be sending out the recording to everyone after the webinar today. <clears throat> These are your amazing lineup of speakers that will be sharing some of the information with you, doing a brief demo. Everybody has 15-ish minutes. So that way we can have this wrap up in under two hours for you. And again, this is going to be recorded. So if you have to miss one of them or drop off early or you join late, whatever it is, you will be able to get to see all of them in the recording. So don't worry about that. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. We will try and get to them at the end. And if we can't, of course, I will disperse them amongst the ISVs that you had the question for and have them reach back out to you after the webinar so you can get those questions answered. This is our agenda for today and the lineup of the ISVs that you will see. So kicking it off will be Locksep or now part of the Sage Network. So we will have Whitney kicking things off for you. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to, I wanted to launch my poll. I just cannot find it. Here it goes. And I wanted just to see who is going to Acumatica Summit. So if you are, let us know. If you're not, well, we can fill you in <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> And maybe we'll do a recap webinar. And if you're not sure yet, you did miss early bird pricing. Unfortunately, that ended for last Friday, but that's okay. All right, we got about half of you, a little more than half of you attending. So yay. All right. I'm going to let Whitney take it from here. Thank you, Amy. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Julian's going. Okay, Julian, we'll see you there. Hmm. Okay, and everyone, can you see my screen? Go ahead and see Not my yet. Cast. You cannot see my screen. Okay. How about now? It's starting. Yay, here it goes. Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you so much. Um, as Amy said, my name is Whitney Gilstrap, and I am the Director of Marketing for Stage Air Automation, uh, formerly Lockstep. Um, just as an FYI, I know I am aware that I am on a Acumatica demo day, and I am um, with the Sage team, but um, just as <clears throat> FYI, we were acquired last year by Sage, um, and we still very much integrate and see Acumatica um, as a great customer base for us to serve um, so just with that, I'll go ahead and jump in and get started. Here's the quick um, agenda for us today. Unfortunately, I am having technical difficulties with our demo recording that I was gonna be showing and I wanted to make sure everyone can hear it. So um, what I will do as soon as that gets um, loaded into a browser, um, unfortunately the sound won't come through so I don't wanna just play something that you guys can't hear. But I will drop the link to the demo recording um, within the chat. It's just an eight minute long video that you can kind of get a sneak peek at what the software will look like um, within, the, within the platform. But first, I just wanted to kind of set the stage and talk about what some of the challenges are that we see um, that our customers were seeing with the manual collections process prior to implementing an automation solution. And then um, obviously I'm gonna skip over that automation demo portion. But then I'm just going to go into a customer spotlight that I wanted to highlight with some successes that we have seen. All right. So the first thing really I wanted to talk about was time. And, you know, really the first thing to do is embrace <clears throat> that you should be embracing here is when it comes to the day to day actions that any department takes. Um, is that everything related to accounts receivable distills down into something having to do with time? And, you know, that's because time is money, right? and you're trying to collect on that money. That time equates directly to that cost center, which is accounts receivable. So there's the time to get the invoices to the right contact. 
um, time the staff actually spends on any in any individual invoice, which I'll talk about on the next slide. But essentially that entire quote to cash process that fuels your bank balance. So all of these listed here, um, you know, they have to do with when it comes to the measures you're having, or most of these are probably also related to the time or should be in some way that the measure that you're doing for, um, you know, success. So how do you reduce the manual time spent on any one invoice? And what I mean by manually process processing is that you have a lot of human effort and additional delay getting the invoice um, just by the nature of the process itself. Uh, you have to get it. You know, you have to find the correct contact that you're sending this to. You have to formulate that email, um, get any attachments that are necessary, and then sending it. Um, but then when you add the volume that get the, the volume on top of what those steps are and that manual steps are, it gets even more delayed. Then if you throw in, you know, potentially inconsistent communications can delay as well, or the inconsistent messaging or tone. You know, one day, you know, one rep might be sending out reminders, um, another rep might not be sending out reminders potentially. But more importantly, if every one of your invoices is being currently being processed manually, a lot of those high value customers, or at least what we see, maybe ones that you have a lot of business with or the ones that make the really big orders. Those are the ones who actually do want you to have a human touch involved normally. Without that automation, you don't. They don't often get that attention because the attention is focused. Um, you know, all the agents are really distracted on, on those tasks rather than those high value accounts. So this is a really ugly screen, um, but basically what it's showing is is you know a lot of the manual steps. I always like to say marketers have tools for automation like HubSpot, um, and sales has tools for um, sales enablement automation, like outreach or sales handy, customer success, you know, they have Zendesk, but the most vital part of the business really has little to no automation. And what we see is without that automation, businesses face these challenges um, and all of these manual processes that are listed out here. So the picture that you're seeing here um, or the screenshot that you're seeing here is um, what, one of our prospects that sent to us prior to implementing automation. and. This was an aging spreadsheet that they would manually export. They would review it, you know, sometimes daily with, with their teams. And then by the end of the week, it was normally outdated um, and then had to be reworked again. And what we found is without that automation piece that all of this is done manually. And additionally, there's really no visibility to any of the other team members because that staff is so limited that they can really only focus on chasing those customers that are typically the 60 days past doing above. And there's really no proactive um, proactive effort trying to get them to pay, make those proactive payments. It's really more of a reactive um, scenario. And when you take a step back and look at it, it's really, it's really just a manual process that's built on Outlook and Excel to support those activities. All right, so um, what is accounts receivable automation software? Um, sometimes, you know, I just like to always throw this one in there because it's, thrown around a lot, but not everyone knows exactly what that means. Um, but at its core, the platform is cloud-based software that integrates with Acumatica, and it helps to keep those finance and those accounts receivable teams organized by replacing those manual tasks that I was talking about earlier and replacing them with um, automation and that, that's involved with invoicing those customers and collecting on those payments. And what this does, it saves a company time and it saves them money. The five key features that we like to showcase in our platform are the ones listed out over here. Um, and these are the ones that will be included in that demo video link that I will share out that I actually think I was able to get uploaded. So maybe I will show it. Um, I'll just have you guys let me know if you can actually hear the sound or not. If not, then this will, this, like I said, will go much quicker. Um, but these are some of the bragging rights uh, that, that we see after post implementation, typically a year um, that we're seeing and that's around a 30% reduction in DSO, more uh, 3X increase in team productivity, and then the 30% plus increase in cash flow. So let me see if I can get this to play. I'll let you know. Okay. It's loading up. Hmm. I don't think it's going to work. 
I've been bogging down my system. All right, I will not take too long to do this. Cause... Okay, all right. Well, I'm sorry, everyone. I was hoping to show that. But like I said, I'll share this link out um, and make sure it confirm it works before everyone can get to it. Um, the last thing I just wanted to go through um, just was to highlight one of our customer successes that we were able to see. Um, Mar Vista is, you know, they're they're a long-standing customer of ours and a global leader in entertainment, um, based out of Los Angeles. And like many organizations, they struggled with their collection strategy, mainly being mostly manual and managed, you know, through that Outlook and Excel, um, those Outlook and Excel tools, like I'd mentioned earlier, like like a lot of accounts receivable departments, but. When, when we were digging into it, the finance team would regularly meet with um, their internal stakeholders and then manually update back into the ERP based on the feedback that they received so that they could then track um, track what the status was for the different um, the different collections <clears throat> statuses. And then what they would do is use Outlook to basically manually follow up on those discussions based on the feedback they received. Some of the biggest challenges um, that they that they did face prior to automation was again that manual process that was very time consuming, time intensive, manually emailing. Um, they also faced workforce constraints specific to collections and activity management. Um, and what all this did was really resulted in lack of visibility and transparency at the account level. So when we looked a year later and looked back at some of the progress that we were able to see. Um, you can see some of these listed here, but really some of the main results were that 20 day reduction in DSO or day sales outstanding for those of you that aren't aware of that term, um, while also being able to scale without add, without adding incremental headcount. That was a huge one. Um, that, and that is a huge one consistently for a lot of our for a lot of our customers. You know, they think because they're scaling, they need to always be adding more bodies. But if you're reducing that manual work and replacing it with automation, what we found is that there really is no need um to to add those to add that additional headcount on your team because a lot of it is done through automation they also were able to improve visibility across all of their departments and their customer segments um, which was a huge win for them as well okay um and like i said that was my presentation today again really sorry i was not able to show that video for you um i'll drop it in the chat but if anyone has questions scan the QR code, um, we'll get someone in contact with you right away, and uh, we can answer any of those questions that you have. Thank you so much, Whitney. Yes, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A, and we'll be sending out the demo video link in the recording as well. So I love that analogy about how marketing has automation software and sales has automation software. So yes, back office should also have automation <laughs> software. <laughs> right? <laughs> it would make sense. It Thanks, would. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Next up, we have Matt St. John from V Technologies. Hi, welcome, Matt. Hi, Amy. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for taking time to join today's webinar. Really appreciate everyone taking the time. Uh, we know, you know, of course, your time is valuable. Uh, so, again, my name is Matt St. John. I'm the senior sales executive here at V Technologies, uh, or AKA Starship. Uh, and today, I just want to kind of go over real quick uh, the benefits of a multi-carrier shipping solution. So we have a couple slides. We'll quickly do an overview, and then I'll jump in and, and you know do a live demo. Uh, of course, I'm going to kind of keep it short, but uh, please feel free to reach out if you want to uh, do a follow-up call. You know, we can do a discovery. Uh, you know, and, and take time to do a deeper dive into Starship. Um, but basically, uh, before we start off here, I just want to talk a little bit about. V Technologies as a company. Oops, I get this slide back to move. There we go. Uh, so as you see, we were founded in 1987. Um, we have uh, things like with uh, FedEx, UPS, we are considered a certified uh, shipping solution. And basically what that means is things like our shipping uh, uh, labels are going to be delivered to you already certified. Uh, of course, the carriers do require certified labels that meet their needs or their specifications. Um, as you see, we, we were a named uh, UPS Ready 2022 Premier Partner uh, last year, so that was a great award to receive. And then also being a certified solution, uh, if, if anyone is taking advantage of the carrier subsidy programs, also note uh, you can qualify for free funding, and because we're a certified vendor, uh, you can use that to purchase Starship. 
Now, we are located in Connecticut. Um, also, everything we're doing, uh, you know, like things like support are all done in-house. So we're not outsourcing anything like that. You know, you, you have an issue, uh, you're going to get our team in, in uh, Connecticut. Um, now, uh, we also, that's all we do at uh, B Technologies is integrated shipping solutions. So it really gives us the, the, the time and really to think about all those little nuances. You know, I have a lot of clients that come to me and, oh, you know, can we do this? Can we support that? Um, so there, you'll see there's a lot of things that we do fully support. Um, but basically what we're going to want to do is help streamline your day-to-day -day shipping activities. Now, we do integrate with over 14 other ERP systems. But of course, today we're going to talk and show you the integration with Acumatica, which we've been working with Acumatica for eight years now, actually one of the longest uh, shipping ISVs that have been working with Acumatica. And over the 35 years that we've been in business, we've actually had over 10,000 companies that have used our shipping solutions to, again, help streamline that day-to-day -day shipping activity. All right. Um, so main features of using a multi-carrier shipping software, uh, and really with Starship, I always kind of say it's multi-carrier, multi-mode. So just so you know, just through the Starship software, you are going to be able to process all your different type of shipments. So that can be, of course, domestic, small parcel, international. Uh, we also support LTL type shipments, um, blind drop shipments, and uh, you see the bullet here, but I'll, I'll even show you how Starship can streamline uh, doing blind drop shipments because we do fully support them. But just if anyone out there, you know, if you are currently using like a UPS World Ship, a, a FedEx Ship Manager, uh, just know that Starship will replace those programs. So again, just through one interface, a shipper is going to be able to process all of your different type of shipments. And with that, with our carrier connections, uh, we actually integrate with over two dozen small parcel and LTL carriers. Uh, those carrier connections are going to give you the ability to live rate shop your shipments. So we're pinging those carriers, we're churning things like list price, but of course your contract rate, so your live uh, rate with the carrier. Um, you know, if anyone out there is doing USPS, we fully support USPS. And with our USPS integrations, uh, you're going to gain access to discounted rates, um, as you see actually now even the CEC -E rates. Um, and again, I'll show you in a moment here on the demo, but with Starship, not only are we bringing in that order header information or shipment header information, so of course things like the recipient and how it's going out, but we also bring in the line level detail. So it's, that really helps us, again, streamline things like international bill of lading. Uh, so if you are doing LTL shipments, you know, you're going to Starship can generate bill of lading forms. Anyone out there is doing hazmat, we fully support hazmat. And we have a database where we can store all that hazardous information. Really the same thing with the international information. Um, it, it can all be stored inside Starship's database. So as a shipper, I'm not going to have to stop and, and select information. Everything's just going to be streamlined for me. Again, uh, talked about blind drop shipment. I'll, I'll show you that on our demo. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. Um, and then, of course, uh, with our Starship, we do include what we call our dashboard program, really matrix reporting tool. That also includes our what we call our e-notify program. So if anyone out there is using, say, the carrier email, um, you know, like UPS Quantum View, FedEx email, it, you know, you are sending your customers an email, but Downside of it, it's all branded with the carrier's information. So with ours, you can actually create your own custom email templates, um, you know, send out emails that have your company information. And I'll show you an example of one of those real quick on the demo. Okay. And then, of course, with the dashboard program, really gives everyone access um, to things like running reports and, you know, maybe seeing what's shipped or uh, what's in transit, what's been, hasn't been delivered in time. Um, so again, really, good. we're going to help uh, not only the warehouse and the shippers, but also the front office. And then this is just a snapshot, again, as I mentioned, of some of those parcel and LTL carriers that we do have integrations with. So again, they're going to offer live rate shopping. A uh, nice thing on the LTL side, a lot of them do, you know, all of them, of course, support live rate shopping. But a lot of them also support things like returning pro numbers automatically and electronic pickup. So Starship will ping them and let them know that you have a shipment ready to go, you know, on this date, come get it between these hours. So it eliminates you having to go to all the different carriers to get rates and then also say, oh, yeah, we, we have a shipment ready to go, you know, come pick it up. Okay. So let me just X out of here. We'll jump on my demo machine. And on my machine, <coughs> excuse me, um, this is the actual Starship program. 
And up top, you know, again, I'm going to kind of go through this real fast. But as you see, we have different source options we can pull by sales order, shipment, customer record. Uh, with Acumatic, I find most clients, we, they pull by the shipment. So we create the, you know, you'll create those in Acumatic and then Starship will pull by them. But uh, with this interface, as you see, it doesn't live inside Acumatica. But the nice thing is that really as a shipper, I can just work, live, breathe inside a Starship. So I don't have to jump back and forth between two programs. Technically, I don't even have to be inside of Acumatica. Um, now, when we want to select, the, in this case, again, a shipment record, I can scan in one up here in the shipment field. Uh, you could type it in. Or like in this case, I'm just going to manually select one. But once we scan, type, or select that record, uh, again, regardless if it's sales order, shipment, or customer, as you see, Starship brings in all the shipping information automatically for me. Right? So again, we're just simply data mapping fields. Nice thing with those data mapping fields is like in this case, just because we're pulling by a shipment, we're not limited to just looking at shipment records. So we can bring in you know, user-defined fields or attribute fields or those standard fields, but maybe they, you want them to come from customer maintenance or uh, the sales order. But as you see here, all this information is automatically populated for me. Again, here's an example where Starship automatically is doing a blind drop shipment, changing the company name to Tractor Supply Company for me. Our recipient information, we will do address validation and the residential commercial flag. Um, here's transportation. This is just using your ship via codes to originally tell Starship things like carrier service. Uh, here's an example if anyone's doing third party, automatically has selected that for me and has populated my customer's third-party account information. Okay. Uh, of course, shipping options, we can trigger these from Acumatica. So in Acumatica, insurance was selected. It's selected inside Starship. Okay. So again, those are just our details. And most live environments, really, packaging is the first spot we're going to go to because this is where it allows us to add boxes, select package types, if we want, put items in boxes. Uh, if anyone is using the warehouse management system, um, also know how you define the packaging names, uh, item box information through that. That's how it will flow into Starship. But in this case, I'll, I'll just quickly pack this one. Um, also note that with the packaging information, you don't have to put items in boxes. Starship's not going to yell at the shipper and say, hey, you know, there's no item in that box. So it's an option if you want to get into that level of detail. Here's our quantities, our weights. Uh, this can either come from a scale. My system, I just have the weight set up inside Acumatic for my items. So it's automatically populated. We also calculate dimensional weight. So we will rate shop and send this at the correct dimensional weight. If anyone is getting hit with those uh, fees or the, 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 the correct dimensional calculation. But again, really packaging. And then all we have to do is scroll down here. This is where we see that live rate shopping, pinging those carriers, returning things like business, total days, publish the charge contract. Applied is usually what we write back into Acumatica. We can also do write back rules if there's scenarios where you do not want Starship to charge the customer. Um, also applied can include plus or minus any freight rules. So if you have any rules, you know, maybe it's free shipping over X amount of dollars, you could do that. Um, we can also set up, you know, if you want Starship to do best way shipping where, hey, you know what, automatically select the least expensive carrier. Or as you see, I can manually change the carrier service. But in this case, I'm just going to click ship and process uh, live environment. This is when Starship would just print out and generate the shipping documents. My system, I PDF everything so you can see them. But just know, of course, these would just go to thermal printers, laser printers. Um, you know, if this was LTL, we could generate bill lading forms, pallet labels, uh, international documents like commercial invoices, uh, certificate of origins. But again, normally we get our shipping labels, go to a thermal printer, followed by our packing slip. So those would just all generate. And for a shipper, it takes me right back to the main screen. And then back in Acumatica, let me just refresh this. As you see, we're gonna mark that confirmed. This is the shipment we just sent out. Um, and then on the shipping tab, you know, we can reverse translate ship via codes, address information if it gets changed due to validation, freight cost, freight price um, on the packaging tab. In this case, I built this one inside Acum I'm sorry, inside a Starship. As you see, we still reverse translate the package I use, the items and uh, quantities that I put in each of those boxes. Here's my tracking information. Uh, my reference fields, I'm just using a built-in write back feature where I'm pushing additional shipping information like the dimensional weight and the uh, ETA. Um, you can also do notes up to you what writes back to the note. Okay, so again, uh, live integration, it's seamless. Uh, as soon as we process the shipment for the shipper, the shipment record is going to be updated inside of Acumatica. 
And then real quick, I'll just show you that email notification that I was kind of talking about earlier. Um, so this is that dashboard program, but I'm just going to go into the e-notified -view, e viewer. And again, here's the one you just sent. As you see, you could bring in Acumatica fields like the sales order number, you know, maybe the PO number. Hey, it's coming by whatever carrier, where it's going to, number of packages, ETA is accurate. That's coming directly from the carrier. And then if you want to, you could show them item box information. But the nice thing here, hyperlink tracking numbers takes them to the carrier's website so the customer can track. Uh, on these templates, you can even assign uh, emailing rules. So this one, I have a 20% off promo code. You know, maybe only want it to go to certain customers, but you can hyperlink fields as well and, and send it back, uh, you know, send them to your website. Okay. But again, brief, quick overview I wanted to show you. Again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you for the time and I look forward to talking with everyone. Well, thank you, Matt. That was awesome. And I'm sure shipping is really needed now nowadays during the holidays. It must be like a exactly. spike. <laughs> Can you just imagine yeah, how? Very, very busy time for a lot of our clients. <laughs> yes. UPS, USPS, they must come to, sometimes they come to my house more than once a day. So yeah, I feel bad for them this time of year. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Blue Moon Industries. So Janice Phelps, you are up to share. Oh, and then we'll go on to the demo. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Looks good. All right, great. So a little bit about Blue Moon. Um, I'm Janice and I am with Blue Moon. We've been developing products um, for initially the Dynamics GP space uh, since 1994. We do have products uh, for Acumatica, and today we're going to be showcasing one of those products as well. And um, although I guess the um, the panelists couldn't vote, we will be at the Acumatica Summit, so we will be attending as well. And uh, just a little bit about what we're going to see today. Um, we're, one of the products that we have, it's called Chargeback Processing is meant for customers that work with major retailers. And what happens with those retailers is um, when they go to pay those invoices, they will often short the invoices by what they call adjustments or chargebacks. And those are typically um, either perceived or actual errors that they think you have made, whether you've charged them for shipping and you shouldn't, whether they're taking a credit for a return before sending you back the items, or if they feel that you are out of compliance with one of the myriad of rules that they've given you to comply with, they will uh, take small or large amounts outside of the, off the invoice basically and um, pay the net. And so usually it's the first time you're seeing these is when you get the payment and it is not a full payment and they identify all of these different uh, reasons for those adjustments. Often this can be a huge, a huge manual uh, tracking, you know, process spreadsheets, et cetera, or just simply short paying a whole bunch of invoices and trying to uh, reconcile those differences later. What we do is we add that deductions or chargeback capability right into your Acumatica system so that you can categorize the chargebacks, you can keep track of those chargebacks, you can determine whether you agree or disagree and want to research uh, these particular adjustments, and then also create the corresponding debit memos or placeholders while you do that research. And mainly what it does is it allows you to streamline that payment process and allows you to then get take that capability and bring it into your system. So we're going to take a look at it and walk through uh, that capability. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, stop sharing and I'm going to start sharing uh, over here and then uh, we will take it from here. So let's see, can I, am I sharing both screens now or just one? Just Hard the to slides tell. right just now. One. Okay, great. I'll just uh, move this out of the way and let me go right here. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm still in Acumatica. Slides. Oh, it is still yeah. slides. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Gosh, it's oh, sorry. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Or is that there? We now? go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Great. 
So I leave the marketing to the marketing people. So, all right. So, uh, so you should be seeing Acumatica. Is that true? You're seeing that now? Yes. You're okay. Great. All right. So, um, within Acumatica, um, we allow you to create, um, all of the necessary pieces of this chargeback, um, uh, modules. So going into chargeback processing, just to give you an idea of what we um, do here, what we can do is give you the options of how you want to use the module, whether you want to auto release, auto post, in other words, uh, different transactions. And so we give you quite a few setup options since we are uh, built right into Acumatica. One of the biggest things about that is setting up these different adjustment types. And so the adjustment types give you that capability to go in and really provide those reason codes. So as you can see here, I have, I have freight, I have uh, compliance errors, I have unauthorized RMAs, I have uh, miscellaneous credits that came through. I could also have uh, these codes be specific to a Target or a Walmart or a Home Depot. Um, and because what we also offer is that ability to integrate that remittance right into your Acumatica system, whether it's from an EDI um, integration or just some type of outside integration that's available to you, and then um, up create those adjustments automatically. So um, you can create as many of these adjustments as you want. You can also set up the system so that it knows what type of option it should be. Is it a typical debit or credit? Um, is it typical that you want to research, for example, a compliance error where if you also had maybe an advertising co-op or a co-op for being on an end cap or something like that, you know you're just going to agree with that when it comes through. So you can make these types of decisions here so that when you're processing the remittance, you don't have to be making all of those decisions and you can keep, keep the process uh, pretty streamlined. So we're just gonna walk through creating a remittance here. And uh, we'll just go into the remittance window. You'll see a few other remittances here, but we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. And essentially what this is, is it's a cash receipt with those adjustments on it that you want to process through the system. And so we'll just um, take new and we'll put in, um, we can put in that this is a chargeback remittance. And we're going to pick our customer. As you'll see, they're going to be paying us uh, quite a bit, uh, paying off quite a bit more in invoices. So their check or payment will be $100,000. Now from here, I can, if I have the remittance, I can have either imported those adjustments or in the case of our demo today, I'm just going to enter the adjustments here. And these are those unplanned credits that the customer is kind of hit you with as they uh, sent in that remittance. It's not a planned credit memo that you already knew about. Those may also be taken on that particular remittance. But from here, you can either type in or look up your different types of, of adjustments. Now, if you're familiar with this industry, you'll know that when they give you this reference number, it's a critical number in the system. And if you don't have that number, you really are almost guaranteed of not being able to research or get any kind of resolution from the company. Because as far as they're concerned, they have paid the invoices off. And if you come back and you say, um, hey, this invoice was short paid, they don't have it as short paid. They just have it as paid in full. But if you go after it with, we don't agree with compliance um, adjustment reference number 6450, now they'll talk to you because that number is what they use to keep track of those adjustments in the system. So you can put in as many of these as you want, um, as whatever details you have. And you'll see in that last column, you have whether you allow it or not. And that's simply the default that's coming over from that adjustment setup window. If you knew this RMA was coming, 
and you knew, you know, you were going to allow it, you knew it, it was, you know, as planned, you could put that in there and then just allow it on the fly, even though the type might be um, a type that you would normally not allow. So for example, if I got a second RMA in there and I wasn't sure about that one, I could certainly just leave that one as um, unallowed in the system. Now, as I've been adding these in, this number here of the chargeback amount has been increasing. It's been going up to $45,000. So that's the total of all of the items that I have here. Now, when I pull in the documents to apply, I can load the documents and see the outstanding invoices. This is just standard Acumatica, maybe through a cutoff date. Maybe I just want to load them all. In this case, I'll go ahead and load them all. And uh, what I'll see in those documents is um, normally, <laughs> let's see, let's come back here. I would normally see all of my documents that I have in the system. Um, and um, so I, I am sharing this environment with someone else. So I think they may have pulled my documents out of the system. Um, so normally I would see the invoices that I have here and also any debit or credit memos that I have um, that are available here. And in that case, what I could do is um, I can go ahead and apply them all. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just save my document here and see if there is a, another one here that might be the one that I was uh, somebody else was working on. And um, in this case, I think what I'll do is um, just take all of these amounts. Let's see. Well, yep. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on here. Sorry about that. The beauties of demoing, I guess. Um, and uh, normally, though, I'd be able to apply this right down to zero. And what this does is it takes my payment amount, it adds in the chargeback amount, and it would give me, instead of just $100,000 to apply against the invoices, it would give me that whole $143,000 uh, to apply against those invoices. And then once I completed that task and was uh, able to release that, what would happen is for all of those adjustments that I've created that I did not allow, it would go back and create a debit memos on the customer's account as placeholders while I did my research for these particular uh, adjustments. When, as I do those, the research, if I determine, well, yes, we were out of compliance, the label was incorrect, we delivered outside the delivery window, whatever the reason codes might be uh, for those particular compliance errors, if that was the case, I could go in and create a credit memo and apply my debit memo against it and take it off the account. If I determined as I was going through this research that uh, maybe the customer did agree, yes, that we should have paid the freight, um, that is something that's on our plate, then you could simply send them that debit memo document and they would pay that debit memo document um, against that original adjustment reference number. So you would still be able to keep track of everything that's in the system. And then as you do that research, you could then determine whether a credit memo was necessary to get that RMA, let's say debit memo off the account or whether the customer has agreed that they will pay it and that that really was um, you were not out of compliance or uh, that the freight charge was actually warranted. The other thing that this gives you with these types here is the ability to report and analyze them. Um, we've had customers that have had issues. For example, we had a customer that suddenly was um, getting compliance errors all of a sudden from Walmart, from Target. They were just um, all of a sudden just getting flooded with them. They, instead of just saying, you know, boy, it seems like we're getting a lot of these, they could pluck out that adjustment type and look at that window when that started to happen. And what had happened was they had switched uh, their, their um, printer and the printer was the one that was um, put putting the, um, UP or the uh, UPC labels on their boxes. And they had moved the location of that label and therefore it wasn't scanning through the floor scanner. And if it can't th scan through the floor scanner, then it's out of compliance and then they ding them with that chargeback. And so all of a sudden these one particular boxes were out of compliance and all of a sudden they started getting the chargebacks. But it was very easy for them to go back and kind of identify the window, identify that problem, and then be able to correct it quickly because they had that detailed information 
about those different types of adjustments or um, chargebacks that they had in the system. So in addition to having uh, just that capability to provide the additional unapplied amount, let's say, to clear those um, invoices off of that remittance and then be able to go back and research the transaction separately without holding up the processing of the payment, they are also able to analyze the different types to see where they might have some internal issues that they needed to resolve. So uh, with that, I am uh, going to hand that back over to Amy, but I will say that, you know, we do have a lot of other products that are built for the distribution um, environment and different types of companies that are in that space. And we'd be happy to talk to you about them um, either visit our website or talk to us. And also we will be at the summit and we'll be able to talk to you there. Awesome. Thank you, Janice. And love that this solution is embedded right in Acumatica. So very seamless. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. And so, yeah, if you are going to Acumatica Summit, make sure you visit everybody at their booth. Again, we'll be sending out an email with information as well. All right. Next up is Nubin from Dynamic Budgets. Are you ready, Zubin? Hi there. I am just juggling a couple of screens here. My Acumatica demo is refusing to come off of secure mode, so I'm oh. going to launch a different version of my demo. Okay. Just about there. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no worries. And everyone, I did put the link to the demo video from Whitney in the chat. And if you want to download it or get the link, I will, again, also be sending it in the recording. So you'll get it that way too. But if you wanted to get it in the chat, it is there. Um, I'm going to ask if we could switch with someone here. I'm still having troubles with my computer. Okay. Um, so I'll chances. see if, uh, Casey at use would like to go. She was next in the lineup. Casey, are you ready? I was literally about to oh, pop sorry. in and, uh, and say, Hey, Zubin, you want to, do you want to take a 15 minute pause and try to get it running? No, nah, it's yeah. up. <laughs> so howdy guys. My name is Casey. Here hey, with Casey. Use AP Automation. Um, actually, uh, director of sales over here. Been with the company for over six years now, uh, and seen the just growth over the years. As you know, automation, of course, is becoming more and more streamlined in front end of uh, of all this back end office pro processes. If you go ahead and share my screen, I'll give you a quick just three slider um, slideshow so we don't PowerPoint you to death, and then we will switch over to a live demo, all wrapping up, of course, within fifteen minutes. So if you guys could just give me a nice ooh rah whenever you can see my screen. That looks good. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get rolling then. So like I said, my name's Casey. <clears throat> Fun fact about me, just to get to know the presenter, my wife and I have four kids under four, and we have two French Mastiffs at the house right now coming up to holidays, and we're actually moving. So a lot of people would call us crazy, but I just say, hey, we're having fun. So <laughs> enough about me, let's jump into use. So who is use? Well, like I mentioned, we're an accounts payable automation company. We were born in the cloud in 2010. So some would say we have 13 years of experience with AP automation, but we actually came from our parent company, IDASoft, who has over 37 years in the industry when it comes to workflow optimization, data extraction, and data analytic experience. We're proud to have over 5,000 clients in offices in the US and Europe. And what we love to tout is that 25% of our revenue is reinvested back into research and development that is led and fed by our clients themselves. So we're not trying to bring up all the widgets that we think are really nice. We've listened to our clients and hone in the product as such. So in that full scope of AP automation, we actually do cover everything from purchasing all the way through to the payment um, aspect. So a full P2P software solution. Now this is a la carte. So maybe all you need is invoice automation, no purchasing or payments, that's completely fine. 
um, we can actually mold our solution and configure it to the needs of, you know, smaller um, startups all the way to large enterprise and everywhere in between. So as you can see from the purchasing standpoint is where everything starts. You can create a request, turn that into a purchase order, send it out to your vendor, receive against that purchase order, and then await that invoice to come in to match against that. That brings us, of course, to our capture phase there, which we do have a multi-channel capture phase. You can, uh, of course, manually drag and drop files uh, from folders and or your email. You can take pictures with your smartphone. You can have an automated auto forward from your email. Heck, we can even connect to uh, different servers if you have uh, different XML invoices coming from your vendors into a share drive of some type. That then goes from that capture within 20 to 30 seconds. We extract all of the header field data. We match PO and or do GL memorization. So that way we are alleviating, uh, alleviating up to 95% of that manual data entry into your AP. Now, of course, that can go through many routes of review and approve. And the best thing about the tool itself is I don't know if anybody struggles with it out there, but if you're ever having to chase down approvals in your organization, use becomes that muscle because I have what we I lovingly call nagware, where it'll automate reminders and even automate escalations if those reminders aren't getting through to that user. That, along with delegations built in our tool, Ensure that your AP process never has that bottleneck as you're trying to get those invoices out to payment to ensure your vendor relationships are strong. And I hope you're chasing those early pay discounts as well by changing your net 30 and 45 terms to net five or 10. Of course, with the payment um, out of the back end of that, we can send out a check, ACH, and or virtual credit card. And all those virtual card payments um, that are authorized through our vendors come with a 0.6% cash back to you. So nice way to really hit the three buying tenants that people look for with cutting costs, increasing revenue, and mitigating risk by putting a proper solution in place to make sure your AP is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So that's it from Slideshow. Let me actually dive into the uh, solution itself so that way you can take a look at how things are set up. Go ahead and log in to my demo environment here. I share this with about 100 other people. So I'm gonna choose my application that's tied directly to me. And for that particular application setup is if we have any companies that have, let's say 10 different companies in their portfolio and each of those 10 companies have different books of business. You can keep that all aligned in different applications. Of course, inside of your application, if you are a multi-entity or location uh, client, you can have those um, set up as org units. And you can drill into those particular org units to focus on that particular company or entity as you're working through and processing your invoices. So taking a snapshot of our first landing screen here, you see that I have my to-do section, which is really where I need to focus as a user because that's things that I have to do within the system. And then down below, we have in progress, which is all uh, invoices that have touched us and gone past us. That way we can see exactly which task it sits in and who that recipient's uh, with. So if we ever have a vendor call in, we can have that immediate uh, result and response for them on where that invoice sits within the tool. Now, how did these invoices get in, you may ask. Well, if you remember back to the slideshow, we do have that multi-channel capture engine. If you already have an AP inbox, fantastic. Let's just set up an auto forward for rule from that AP inbox. That way it auto forwards the invoices directly into your platform and begins to digest those through our data extraction. If you have things, uh, maybe paper uh, invoices that are dropped off, need to, need to upload those. So then you can, of course, select them uh, from a file after you scan and upload those wherever you need. Going to go ahead and grab um, a single file, which is a TIFF file. So we do actually support TIFF. PDF, and any other really file formats that you can come across. So we are not a PDF only um, solution. Let's go ahead and choose our TIFF file and begin to upload that. With this additional data, if you want to automatically designate and not utilize our data extraction on such things like a due date, hey, I'm receiving this today, I need it due by next week, let me go ahead and just hard date a due date, you can do that. What I always like to do is choose a highlight color. And since we have our blue and white going, I'll choose that red to keep the red, white, and blue theme going. 
once we import that, it will go through the first validation of duplicate detection, which will look at the file name and size to make sure that we haven't uploaded this file already before. Um, if it hasn't been uploaded before, then it'll allow it to continue. If it has been, it'll warn you that you've already uploaded a particular file. So as that is using, we'll go ahead and just take a quick look into the back end of the solution to see how things are set up. Again, those org units can be set up. You can set your user permissions to only view certain places inside of your solution itself. So that way they have a limited view from what you have as an admin. The integration standpoint from Acumatica is a direct API integration uh, through server users. So that way it's a nice clean setup. Now, the best part about it is the process and workflows like mentioned. These workflows can be set up in really three different sections. Your review, your approve, and then your payment authorization. Now you can have as many workflows as you need as an organization, which if you're a small startup getting running, it may be just a few, but then as you continue to take ground and expand out, you may need to have more complex uh, solutions. These uh, approval flows can be based on dollar amount, um, a particular entity, heck, you can even get down to a GL uh, itself. If we code it to this GL, it needs to go to Frank for approval because he's the one that maintains that GL. So as you can see up here with that task in progress that just popped up, that Granger invoice is already ready to process. So in the uh, lieu of expedited demo, we're gonna go ahead and just drill directly into that particular uh, invoice. So if I come um, up to my Granger invoice, which we just uploaded, we can see that it's actually 100% complete, which means all the required header fields have been complete and there has been a GL memorization or PO match. In this particular situation, we do have a purchase order match. So as we bring into our invoice screen, you'll see the header fields off to the left-hand side, which of course will be configured to that of your Acumatica system and all of the PO lines and GL and dimensional data down below. Over to the right, you have the image of the invoice itself. And if we scroll over words or numbers, it'll pop up with a little bubble that shows exactly what's been read and extracted. Off of this extraction that our algorithms run to identify things like document date. If I click on document date, it highlights it to the right-hand side for me. But let's pretend for some reason it didn't get it. We can of course manually type that information in and utilize our calendar tool, or we can simply come over to the invoice date on the page and click, and it'll pull those in, that data over for us. Then as we tab through the rest of this invoice, it'll, it'll direct us directly to where on the invoice it found this information so we can validate. And then we get down to the actual PO match below. As I can see, ordered some V belts, quantity six, I come over to my description, looks like we have V-belts, quantity six. This is the correct purchase order for this invoice being 230003. Now, if I needed to add any type of comments to this, I can do internal communication. So I can ask individuals if I need to ask questions about a certain invoice and that uh, comment will actually be a part of the audit history itself. So that way you can see who's been internally discussing this invoice with the uh, timestamps, et cetera. And we can also utilize that click and recall to capture things maybe like this FBI number. Instead of typing out that information, we can just simply click and it'll uh, delegate that over to the left-hand side. But what if we have a large piece of information that we need to capture? For instance, for any questions about this invoice or account, call this number. We can drag and lasso and it'll pull over that entire sentence over there for us in our comment section. This is also um, viable inside of descriptions. So I know we have a large um, presence in, uh, let's say, the uh, job market, not job market, excuse me, the construction market, and they actually have to do different job numbers and different coding uh, based on descriptions that are on the invoice. It's a simple click to capture that kind of information. So once we're done with the review process, we are gonna submit this off and then it'll follow those workflows that are built into the back end of the system and go off to the next approver and it automatically pulls up that next invoice that I need to focus on. Now, maybe you're not a purchase order client. Maybe you are um, a client who doesn't utilize purchase orders and just needs GL memorization. Here's an example of a non-purchase order um, invoice 
that came in from flag service. Now, what we'll notice about this flag service uh, maintenance is that there are actual sales tax incorporated. So if you're a company who has to actually uh, validate the sales tax that are coming through your organization, we can automatically pick up net amounts, tax amounts, and total amounts, and we can also build in tax codes to the particular profile as well. We submit this one off. Of course, it'll follow that workflow as well. And as you can see, just the ease of use of the solution as I'm continuously going through. Now that we hit Stokes, it's going to be showing off our second duplicate detection. You'll see a duplicate document has been found here at Use. We can actually view this document, pull it off so that way we can have a side-by-side -side comparison here. And we can see um, that this particular document is indeed a duplicate, Stokes Electric, invoice invoices, uh, invoicing number match, the date matches, et cetera. So I can actually delete this out as such. Now, of course, we would love to have a more comprehensive demo after we discover your needs as an organization to make sure that we're gonna be a good fit here at USE. So if you wanna swing by the booth at Acumatica Summit, I will be there uh, getting a break from the kids and the dogs. Um, don't tell my wife, she's already mad about it, <laughs> but looking forward to seeing you guys there. So that way we can dive into more about what you're looking for as an organization. Thank you so much, Amy. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you, Casey. And I have four kids too, but I, and a dog, and I beat you with two grandkids. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, darn. I'm not there yet. I'll get there one day. <laughs> I am not moving during the holidays, so that's a big, that's brave of you. <laughs> it, it it's been a fiasco so far, but you know what? It, it's just called organized chaos, right? There you go. So. <laughs> I feel like that's our lives anyway, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> and I also love how you said nagware. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> All write right. that one down. Huh? Yeah, I I did write that one down. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Zubin, how's it going? Are we ready? You're muted. All right. So I'm going to be talking through the desktop and trying to present from the laptop, see if this cooperates. So I'm going to hit okay. the share screen button. And hopefully... You get the superhero. Woohoo! All, All right. Okay. So sorry for everyone for a little bit of uh, kind of uh, uh, shenanigans there. Thanks for uh, hopping in there and uh, switching order for me. Um, so with dynamic budgets is a zero based budgeting tool. So we work uh, on the Acumatica platform. Uh, we work. We start our our roots were in GP. Uh, we've recently, in the last year, expanded out to Acumatica, Business Central, Intact, and now on our way over to NetSuite. What we're talking about today is our um, availability for Acumatica. Uh, just a little bit of background on me. Uh, I am the founder of the company. Uh, about 12 years ago, I was in the shoes of, uh, of that of a customer. Uh, I had one foot in finance, one foot in IT working with public traded companies. And we had, um, first company had about 60 departments, $100 million operation. Uh, second company, we had about 600 departments, five different companies, uh, seven financial analysts. And somehow I ended up as the corporate magician who generated 600 Excel file templates, emailed those out to the recipients, and then waited for my inbox to blow up and had to copy and paste and import those back into the ERP to even find out where we stood, find out that the variances didn't look good, and then have to hunt the managers down and ask for reef forecasts. Um, so it wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, looked at all the usual suspects out there on the market, and we just needed something that was quick to deploy. Uh, most of the solutions we looked at were quoting 30 to 60 days for implementation. Uh, they were charging per user, each user that touched the product. Um, and some of these things just need an advanced degree in Excel to understand how to operate. Uh, I needed something that was bulletproof that I could roll out to non-technical, non-financial staff who are incredibly gifted at breaking Excel. And that's what we set out to build. So we work with uh, companies in all shapes and sizes um, from uh, large uh, uh, 
billion dollar operations down to small nonprofits with say just 10 departments. The largest customers got about 28,000 cost centers. Um, so just kind of jumping into the program, what we are focused on, what we excel with is typically when you're trying to distribute the budgeting process and roll this out to your endpoint managers. Now, Acumac has a strong focus on retail and manufacturing. Uh, we focus on general business operations. We're not going into MRP, uh, material resource planning. We're not going deep into the sales forecasting. So if you're retail or manufacturing, it might not be the right fit. But if you're a general business, nonprofit, industry association, um, things like that, that's where we tend to really uh, work well with organizations that want to decentralize this and push this out to the managers. When I say decentralized and pushing out to the managers, typically you're trying to give this as a self-service tool to the end users for them to enter the budgets themselves. We're trying to eliminate the finance team from having to be in the middle. You do not want to have to generate an Excel template, send that out to the managers, collect it back in, import it in, and process it. We completely eliminate that managing that sort of the, the templates and creating the workbooks, sending them out, collecting them back. That all is eliminated with a with a tool like ours. Now, in the Acumatica space, we tend to see two kind of prevalent approaches to budgeting. Raw native uh, Acumatica budgeting, typically you're not going to be doing your budgeting in the Acumatica interface, web interface itself. It's made for just really importing data in from Excel and then making a few minor tweaks here and there but typically most people do their work outside in Excel. We're trying to replace Excel. The other approach that we see is a lot of people using Velixo for reporting, and Velixo has the ability to interact with budgets as well and do a budget right back. But again, similar to Acumatica, typically what we see is when people are trying to manipulate an account and a sub-account combination, the 12 months of values, edit those values, and then re-import those back in. We, in Dynamic Budgets, we act as the sub-ledger for all those line item details per accounts that I'm going to show you here. Um, we typically encourage customers to do the primary budget in the tool, to come back in, not just ignore this for the rest of the year, but use this as a variance analysis tool to record their over-under explanations, how are they trending high or low, doing walk into a reforecast mid-year and then use that information to walk into the next budget cycle. Um, I'll get into some of these modules in the product when we jump into the demo, but here's kind of a quick high overview. We can start with an interface. This is a PC-based application. It's going to sit outside of Acumatica. We'll run a nightly synchronization routine, and what we're doing is copying the full transaction details into our system so you have full drill down reporting capabilities in the tool. Um, typically, when our customers go live, we typically uh, will walk them through about five to 10 hours of training and setup. A lot of our competitors will quote 100 to 200 hours for implementation. It's just night and day difference between the, between the experiences. Uh, before I jump over into the demo, uh, I'd like to open it up for questions right now. Uh, if we have anyone on the line, wondering if you could share with us how you, your organization is currently approaching budgets, um, and if you're having any challenges that uh, you'd like me to see uh, focus on it during the demo. Uh, feel free to come off of the mute if you can. I don't know if, uh, Amy, we can allow them to use their mics or if we just know. need to use the Q&A. Yeah, they can just put it in the chat if they wanted to or the Q&A. Okay. Not sure if we have any questions around budgeting. I can jump on into the demo, but Not really yet. To... No questions. Everybody's very quiet today. <laughs> quiet. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch over and jump out of PowerPoint and switch into the product. Okay. Okay. So this is the Dynamic Budgets application. And I'll warm things up with the fact that we have reporting capabilities. So in Acumatica, you've got branches, you've got accounts, and you've got subaccounts. So subaccount can be a multi-segment code. It could be 
something like three digits dash three digits, um, but you have the ability to either work with known combinations of accounts and sub accounts. So it acts more like a, a, a Dynamics GP multi string GL code if it came from the GP world. Uh, or you can check the box in your setups of Acumatica and allow for account and sub account combinations to be made on the fly. So what that means is that we are either pre-building a list of account and sub-account combinations that were predetermined such that your staff can only work with approved codes that you want them to touch, or we could treat it as a, as a dimension with a drop-down menu that you choose your account and then you could choose any combination of sub-accounts there, thereafter. So it really comes back to you. How controlling do you want to be with your system? We can support either of those flavors. So I'm going to come in here. I'm bringing up uh, what we kind of jokingly call the 12-month plain vanilla report. Uh, in our menus, we can relabel these items. We can move items around. We can turn certain items off, or we can make them available To administrators only. So on screen for my 2020 actuals, I was trying to bring that up. And in here, I've got 12 months plain vanilla uh, financials showing up on screen. If I wanted to, I can right click and drill down on month or year to date transactions. So even though I am in a budgeting tool, I have full reporting capabilities on Acumatica data. I can scroll over here, I can see the vendors or customers that we had sold to or purchased from. Uh, I've got the journal entry numbers in case we have any questions about these transactions and need to report that to accounting. It looks like this transaction was miscoded. You can copy and paste this data out to Excel. You can export it out to Excel. Uh, very sort of user friendly. Now, this is kind of plain laundry list of my financials. I can also spruce this up and show this in terms of uh, my roll ups with my different categories and groupings. I might want to look at this from a company total perspective. I might want to look at this from a departmental perspective, my different GNA consulting, sales and marketing. We go into my consulting, which is mainly COGS. If I go into my GNA, we've got the majority of our expenses. So all this is kind of on the fly. I hit the report button one time. I've got this data on screen, but then I can slice and dice it in different styles. I'm going to flip over to data entry screen. And over here, and Amy, if you could give me a, a couple of minutes uh, countdown before I have to turn over to the next, uh, next presenter. Sure. You have uh, um, we, five minutes. Okay. A lot of our customers will um, build their starting point screen, something like this that feels like a comparative financial report. You might bring in a couple of years of actuals. You might have a couple of years of prior budgets. You might have your proposed budget here to kind of focus on. This could have been a data entry column where they could key in an annual number and be done with their budgets. Uh, most of our customers would prefer that their customer, that their end managers drill down and enter the line item details for those budgets instead. So if I were to click on the blue account number, I can drill down. And this is where we kind of start separating ourselves from the native Acumatica capabilities. If I want to itemize my revenues or itemize my expenses, this is where I can come in, uh, sales uh, line one, region two, region three, things like this. We can come in here and put in our forecast. So I can put in $5,000 a month. I can copy and paste this like in Excel with keyboard shortcuts, control shift right arrow, things like that. Control C to copy, control the V uh, to paste. So it's going to feel familiar to those that are working in Excel. Um, we have the ability to do calculations in here, five times 25, but we don't really want to encourage users to use math in the cells because we don't want to have to go in after them and hunt those math formulas down. So we give the convenience of a calculator, but we're not encouraging the use of math. Now, if they wanted to do a lookup and do something more fancy, we might have a 
IT manager who complains that I need to know how much I spent with each of my vendors last year. And I don't recall how much is due to which vendor and in which month I need to pay it. Well, we could come in here and bring up this little screen and say within your supplies for your supplies accounts, you had three vendors and Metro Business, Office Supplies, et cetera. We're gonna go ahead and grab those three vendors that you worked with last year and import those in to your budget. This is how much you spent with each of the vendors and in which month this was due. So this is particularly useful for IT managers with recurring annual software maintenance contracts that they can be taught how to do this or worst case scenario, the finance team has this available to work with as a tool on the fly in the conference room. Bottom half of the screen, if they're wondering what they spent their money on in a prior year, they can actually just click through that number at the bottom of the screen and they have instant drill back capability into the financials to answer their own questions. Uh, when you're done with the budget, we want them to come back in and review the performance throughout the year. We can come back in here and take a look at my variances, bring up my January performance. I could take a look at these things. I might have filtered it to only show me the accounts that are greater than say a $5,000 variance, or maybe I want to release the filter and look at all of my variances. I could come in here and double click a particular variance value. And it's going to give me a split screen showing me the line item details from the actuals compared to the full annual budget of that account. So was I over under for a month due to a timing difference earlier or later than anticipated spend? Or was it due to a unplanned expenditure? They can do that research. They can come back in here and drop in an explanation for the month. This one was only due to a timing difference, but maybe there was something else out there. Maybe you had rented an additional floor of your, of your building, but unanticipated expense that you're gonna to need to carry forward next year. When you go to enter your budgets, those comments show up here at the bottom half of the data entry screen. So they can be used to inform decisions. If you have managers in high turnover, if the prior manager had left them notes in the system, those notes would be available to the next manager coming in here to hopefully make better decisions. Um, we've got limited time today, but uh, we've got a very deep payroll module with an hourly module, a salary module, as well as a staff scheduling model uh, that is used by healthcare and hospitality with 24 seven operations and shift differentials to worry about. We have about 11 different ways to calculate allocations. So if you are in the practice of corporate overhead allocations and distributing expenses out, we've got lots and lots of calculators for that. Ability to duplicate budgets. So once you've created your budget, it just takes a few steps in about 30 seconds to clone the original budget to create your next one for your mid-year forecast and such. So uh, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We are sort of the Swiss Army knife of budgeting and lots and lots of pieces here, but uh, we'll just sort of taper off for today. Thank you. Thanks, Subin. We do have a question from Bruce. Can you drill to the Acumatical, Acumatica journal transaction screen or any screen from within dynamic budgets? Yes, that was what I was showing right here. Um, this is the transaction details. And I think what you're asking for is the ability to actually then drill back into the Acumatica system itself. And yes, uh, we have the ability to link back to the URLs for those screens. I don't have it active on the system, but uh, I can show it to you in the demo right afterwards. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Zubin. Yep. And ne next, we have Heather from BizRun. Heather, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. I'm excited to be here for Acumatica Demo Day. Me too. We're getting down to the wire. Um, to the left. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm I'm excited to show you guys what what BizRun brings to Acumatica. Let me um, share my screen with you. Yeah. Let you know when everything's good to go. All right, looks good. 
I should see three people, right? Oh, nope, here we go, slide. You should see a slide. Yeah, we're gonna start off with slides. Perfect. So I'm gonna start off with a quick overview of what this run is, and then I'll jump right into the demo. So this run is cloud-based HR software for small business. Um, it began as a standalone product, but it's now integrated with Acumatica Cloud ERP and Acumatica Payroll. It's got a wide range of features, uh, things like timekeeping, paid time off, onboarding, an interactive work chart, and really all the things you'd expect from an HR information system. Uh, but let's take a look at the most popular features for Acumatica. So first and foremost, timekeeping. Uh, you can clock in from a mobile phone or desktop, um, only charge to projects you're approved for in Acumatica. Uh, time cards get routed to supervisors for review, and we support bi-monthly payroll with overtime, which can be tricky. Uh, next is paid time off. Employees can submit PTO requests and view balances themselves from mobile or from desktop. Requests get routed to supervisors, and everyone can see PTO on multiple shared calendars in Google and Outlook. Next is employee records. This run gives you a home for all of the employee related data that might not be in Acumatica. So things like training, licensing and certifications, EEO data, employment history, compensation, performance reviews, and employees can actually fill out electronic forms like I-9s and W-4s and uh, electronically sign them. And once those get approved, the data in them gets transmitted to Acumatica via API. Uh, which brings us to the last and most important feature I wanna highlight, the Acumatica integration. Basically any data that gets updated in BizRun, uh, once it gets routed for approval to a supervisor or admin, and then once approved gets pushed to Acumatica via API. So stepping back for a minute to look at the bigger picture um, and the full suite of capabilities that BizRun offers, we already touched on timekeeping, paid time off, and employee records. We also have digital onboarding. So new hires can fill out forms and electronically sign documents. Uh, tasks get created for people or departments to complete to keep that onboarding process on track. We have compensation management. Uh, supervisors can route pay change requests to the appropriate party for review and processing. Uh, performance management. This run gives you an easy way to handle employee performance reviews that is flexible and customizable. And recruiting. Uh, from this run, you're able to post jobs to multiple job boards and track your applicants. And all of that is integrated with Acumatica. Uh, notice that payroll is not listed here. Just to get in front of a question I get asked sometimes, uh, BizRun does not have an independent payroll solution. Instead, we integrate with Acumatica Payroll. And we do, of course, offer a CSV export for use with other payroll systems. So with that, I will jump into the demo. Okay, let me know when you see three people on the screen. I see them. Okie dokie. So I'm obviously logged into the desktop version of BizRun. I'm logged in as Alex Sanchez. I'm looking at a view of my organization where I am in uh, the org chart, and I can drill up or drill down as I like. Um, the mobile app is a bit more streamlined, especially when it comes to timekeeping. Uh, basically, the timesheet opens up immediately when you open the mobile app. But we're just going to go into Alex and charge some time. Alex is a clock in type of worker. So he has already clocked in this morning. Uh, we can actually see uh, hours that he's charged to this week. Um, he charged a full eight hours yesterday. He was working on a couple of different projects. He went to lunch. Um, so uh, right now, if I'd like, I can go ahead and transfer to another project. And the list of projects that I see here is filtered uh, the projects come over from Acumatica, and these are the only projects that Alex has permission to charge to. 
So now I can transfer to this other project. Uh, and later in the day, he can he can transfer to uh, a break or to lunch. And of course, at the end of the day, he can clock out. Um, next, I'm going to show you a time off request. OK, so I can take a look at my balance. Um, I can see as of today, Alex has uh, accrued a little over 42 hours of time off. Uh, by the end of the year, he'll have 48 hours of leave accrued. And I can put in a request for him. So let's say he wants to take two whole weeks off for Christmas. Okay, so this round's giving us some good information here. For one thing, we're seeing that this time off request is way over budget. Um, another thing that's helpful to see, if we look down here, uh, we can see the request day by day. We see there's some potential conflicts with other colleagues in the office, uh, which can be helpful. And we also can see the Christmas holiday that he's uh, being given. Uh, he can come in here and edit this. Let's say he wanted to only take a half day. He can put in which hours uh, he would be taking off, but he's going to have to knock off a lot more than just a half day to get this back in line. So let's cut off some of that time. Now we can see he's got uh, 40 hours of leave requested, and we can go ahead and submit that. Okay, and now we can see that request in his pending folder. And um, we can open that up and look at some detail here. I don't I don't know if this is true for you, but for me, my my Zoom window is partially covering this, but um, you can see uh, the request details. You can see that this request is awaiting his boss, Hannah, to approve it. Um, if he wanted to, uh, he actually can the details if he was fuzzy on wait what was that request I put in and um and he can withdraw it if he uh, decides that he wants to do something different so um that's PTO okay next up I'm going to log out and log in as a different user um, to give you a feel for a different style of timekeeping Logging in is Maxwell Baker, who might be familiar to some of our viewers from the demo data set in Acumatica. So Maxwell is set up for timesheet style timekeeping rather than clock in, clock out. Um, and this would be timekeeping that might be done at the end of the day or even the end of the week. And we can see that Maxwell has charged he charged this time yesterday. He's splitting time between a couple of projects. And um, he's got four hours charged today. So we'll go ahead and put in four more hours on this project. And again, these are the projects that he has uh, permission to view and charge to from Acumatica. Um, we also, I wanted to mention, we're currently in development with uh, an enhancement to capture uh, labor item and cost code as well in timekeeping. So that's a new development that we're excited to have coming out here soon. So he's got 16 hours on his timesheet. And at the end of the week, he can submit that time card uh, for approval and um, and once approved, those hours will get pushed into Acumatica for pay. So the last thing I want to show you guys, it's kind of a quick tour. Uh, we're going to hop into personal info. As I mentioned before, BizRun gives really a home for all of that employee-related data that you might not have all that detail in Acumatica. Um, so we, we can see just some basic employee information. Uh, we have all the EEO data, um, you know, critical contacts, payroll information, 
employment history, compensation history, documents that are saved with him, performance reviews, benefits elections, of course, his time, his PTO, and then training, licensing, and certifications. I do want to mention over here in that first tab, we have some additional fields, see some Acumatica related fields. Um, this data gets pulled over from Acumatica, um, uh, but any updates that get made here, uh, once approved, they will update in Acumatica as well. And um, especially when it comes to the EEO data, anybody who has spent time in the dreaded payroll tax setting screens knows how tricky that screen can be to update. And these screens we have in, in BizRun just give a little bit more user-friendly experience for updating those fields. Um, but right now I'm gonna hop over to payroll and, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry. Draw this request. Okay, I want to walk you guys through adding a direct deposit form. So here in BizRun, he can go ahead himself and set up direct deposit, and he can enter his uh, bank information. I'm just going to put in some bonus, uh, bogus account numbers. If he wanted to, he could actually split his pay between checking and savings account if he wanted to, but we're just going to keep it simple and set up one account for direct deposit. So that's what we entered. We're going to go ahead and submit it. He's going to electronically sign it. It's as easy as this. Click of a button. Okay, this is what he submitted. Now, um, similar with the PTO request, when we go over and take a look at his pending folder, we can see that request in here. Um, we can actually click to view this form, and this one has uh, electronically created this form. It shows the, the signature and that will get saved on his record. And uh, he can see that it's it's awaiting one approver. So um, yeah, this is uh, high speed uh, <laughs> a demo of this run. But um, yeah, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, we would love to be in touch. So if anybody's interested in seeing more, obviously we can show uh, the actual updates that occur in Acumatica. Um, so you can reach out to us at www.bizrun.com or on LinkedIn. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Heather. That's, I love how easy it is to use your software. That's for sure. I bet a lot of employees like it too. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least... Nicole, almost there. I'm going to go ahead wait. and <laughs> wait. Um, and you know what? I'm on Acumatic because I'm because I'm already ready to present. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize everything, make sure everything's fine. Um, so as you guys know, I am Nicole Benitez from Repay and I have Wade Ekman on here. He's our senior vice president of B2B business. Um, so how this is going to go today, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Acumatica. We'll make it short and sweet. I'll show you how our vendor payment automation solution looks in the AP tab of Acumatica. And then after that, I'll pass it off to Wade so he can talk about what happens after we receive that file and how we automate your vendor payments. So I just want to make sure everybody can see the presentation. We're going to talk about how to regain control with your AP automation, and I'm going to jump straight into Acumatica.
Now, I know previously a lot of you guys have known us because we are in the receivables tab as well. So we accept credit card, ACH payments, and we send out custom links to your customers where they're able to enter into our repay portal and pay any bills that they have outstanding. We still offer that. I know um, a lot of companies go into that, so I'm not going to skim over that. If you would like more information, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to do a quick demo for you guys. But today I want to focus on our payable solution. We know Acumatica has a wonderful payables solution. Um, so we're integrated inside of Acumatica, so you don't have to leave Acumatica at all. Um, and when you're ready to make a payment for one of your vendors, all you have to do is enter in that information into the accounts payable portion of Acumatica, which is what I went and already did ahead of time. So as you can see, I've added an item over here. Ooh. Did I just mess myself up? No, I didn't. Okay, I added an item over here um, and then I put the amount in there as well and repay comes in the financial tab. So previously when you use a payment method, you usually check um, an ACH, a credit card or an ACH payment or maybe even a cash payment. And instead of selecting those as the payment method for your accounts payable automation tool, what you're gonna have set up is this repay AP payment method. It doesn't cost a lot of work or, and it, it's it's not a huge headache. It's as easy as a flip of a switch. Um, and then if you'd like to, in your vendor payment card, you can go ahead and select repay AP as the preferred payment method for your AP payments. So just wanted to point that out real quick. I already went ahead and keyed in an invoice that we have to pay. And when you're ready to make that payment, you can automatically make the payment in the payables tab. Or what I'm going to show today is um, a group payment that we're going to go ahead and um, accept. And we want to make that payment. But I know there's people who are currently signing checks. So I in this demo, I'm going to go ahead and show how it looks when we want to approve a payment. So like I said, I keyed in this invoice. We're ready to make the payment. We want to get this off of our chart. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pay. And this is standard Acumatica workflow. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to enter in that payment reference number. Let's see what's today, December 5th, 2023. And I'm going to remove that hold and release it. So from here, we can end it right here and the file will be sent to our repay vendor payment automation team, um, which Wade will get into what we'll do after that. But if we're looking to get a level of security and improvement going on, we also have this tab set up inside of Acumatica that's integrated. I'm gonna go ahead and see where it is. This repay payment group approval. So there's multiple ways to approach this. What we can do is authorize all the payments that are listed in here whenever we're ready, or we can select one at a time and authorize the payment group. If you don't want to do this and you want to automate that process, we can set up a scheduler over here and you won't even have to worry about it. Um, you can set it up at the end of the day or at five o'clock when you know the offices are closing. And then we'll go ahead and approve that payment group and that's all you have to do because we're gonna talk about the good stuff right now after we approve this. So I'll go ahead and stop right here. I know it looks too good to be true that this is the only thing you have to do in Acumatica and it's integrated. So you don't have to step out of anything to do this, but it gets better than this. So I'll go ahead, pass it off to Wade. I'll stop talking because I can chat for days and then he'll just go into what happens on our back end. Hope I didn't lose everyone. No, Wade is, oh, yeah, there you go. Oh. I was gonna say, Wade, you were muted. <laughs> That's me, um, yeah, so to echo what Nicole mentioned, you know, when the vendor payment method within Acumatica is flagged as repay, no longer do folks in the accounts payable have to even decision what that payment method is. It's just, hey, the repay payments. <clears throat> then what we do after a payment file comes in we do real-time verification of what the best payment method each vendor will accept that's best for our clients. So if the vendor happens to accept a card as a form of payment, think of CentOS for the floor mats, waste management for the dumpsters, AT&T, our amount for data retention, just all these vendors that accept card, we're going to make sure the vendor is paid by card because it's free, plus you get a rebate back on the card spend. If the vendor doesn't take card, we work to confirm if we could get them set up on ACH where we're verifying all the banking data 
we validate it, protect against fraud, hold the banking data, and then settle the payment through ACH, through direct deposit, uh, similar to payroll, direct deposits, and then we'll email a remittance to the vendor with all the, the payment information, the invoice data, so they know how to apply the payments. And then if the vendor says, oh, look, I'm old school, just mail me a check, we do the print and mail the check. So it creates a revenue stream where just think if your payables had enough volume, um, the rebate based on the card spend could be 2000 5000 when we have some big clients where it could be $100,000 a month, whatever it might be. Um, but then all we do is net a small fee for the check and the ACH against that. So in the example where it might have been $2,000 a month in card rebate, we might have $500 of check fees for all the checks we put in the mail and two or 300 from the ACH fees with the per ACH fee. And then it would net that five or six, 700 from your $2,000 rebate. And there's still a $1,300 net rebate revenue after all of the energy, um, time and cost of identifying the payment method, holding, securing against fraud and executing the payments. So at a high level, that's what we do. You no longer worry about the payment method, just send them a repay. We're going to optimize the payment method and execute all the payments and awesome. pay you money and there's revenue. It's the most important part. <laughs> awesome. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning more about our accounts receivable or accounts payable automation solution, feel free to scan this QR code or send questions through the chat and we can go ahead and answer them real quick. But um, that's pretty much it. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'll go ahead and open it. I know it was pretty quick and sweet. So I hope it was a little bit useful and you were able to take some stuff away from this. Yes, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole and Wade. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. We'd be happy to answer them now. Thank you so much for those of you who stayed on with us the entire time. As a lot of them, a lot of these ISVs will be at Acumatica Summit. So you can also visit them there. And my dog is here wanting to be part of the webinar. <laughs> so if there aren't any questions or anything like that, we can certainly give everybody back the rest of the time of their day, some time in their day. But thank we'll you, everyone. we'll see everybody at Acumatica Summit. I look forward to it. Yes. Bye-bye. It'll be exciting. Thank you. thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for hosting us. You're welcome. Bye, everyone.